It won't take. I forgot to probably, tell you. Probably won't take us too long. No, no. We're well, we're usually done by noon anyhow, so it shouldn't be too long. Uh uh. Yeah. Um anyhow, that's that's really all I had. I don't have anything else under new business. Anybody else have anything? Uh, yes. I've got something that uh, <clears throat> Carol came across in the uh, Tribune on a photographer, a, a lady who's been in business for 40 years, and uh, she's running an active business now. I think she's 80-something, 80 81 years old. Um, Sandy Hill, which is like right across the uh, Route 30 from where we are, is uh, somewhere over there is where she lives, and she's still running an active business. And I guess uh, what prompted her to send it to me was uh, that she is uh, very active in reconstruction. So what I did is I put in the um, let, me, let me take this in the chat. It should be in the chat now a link so that when you have time you can go and read the uh, Tribune article on her. But uh, right here in Latrobe area, a uh, lady that's been in business for 40 years and uh she does she did conventional photography but she sort of settled on doing reconstruction work so it's there if you feel like taking a look at it okay thank you thanks um greensburg art center they called me rose called me and there's a gentleman, a photographer from Pittsburgh Photography Club or something like that. His name's Fred, and I don't have his last name in front of me. Um, is it Fred had, Finley? What is it? Fred Finley, by chance? Because he's out that way. I don't think it's Finley, no. No? Okay. <laughs> it was a longer name. I forget what his name. I'll have to go down and look. Um, anyways, on the 21st, at five o'clock, um, I'm gonna meet him, maybe Annie. Jim, you're invited to, um, to meet with him. Anyways, he wants to put a digital photo contest online um, and he wanted um, WPS to be part of that. So we're gonna go and find out the details. So uh, look for information on that. Sounds good. When's that? The twenty? When you say it was the twenty first. It's a, it's uh, a Monday. At five p.m. at Greensburg Art Center. Can you make it? Uh that's too far ahead of. Okay. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you if I could make it tomorrow at this point, but I, we'll see. Maybe. Yeah. So, I didn't know if you worked like Mondays later. But, so. Well. Yeah, no, I won't. I'll have to work late Monday because I'm off early tonight. Oh, okay. I think it's just, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at the right calendar. Okay. Well, just, I'll, I'll send you more of the details. Okay. I just don't have them in front of me. I just got back from Pittsburgh, so I've been traveling all day. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Nope. Going one, going twice. Okay. Well, uh, that was pretty much all I had at this point. I'll, uh, um, so I guess tonight was supposed to be cell phone photography, uh, is what we were going to do. I don't know, uh, Marty, I'm assuming you didn't really get anything put together as a Zoom meeting for cell phone photography? No, okay. but there's stuff online. We can take pictures of it. I've, I've already mean, got, I've already got a couple of YouTube and... videos pulled up. Um, so Look, I, I can two... use my cell phone to take a picture of that. <laughs> I, um, I tried to upload some of my photos and I could not get them on there for my cell phone. It's difficult, but it does work. It was it was really easy for me. I took them off my cell phone, and put them on my computer, and then uploaded them to Reddit. Oh, that would work. Well, that's that's what I tried. That's what I tried to do, and I don't know what was going on with my phone, um, but I couldn't get anything uploaded. It was acting. It was acting up with the connection. It's okay. Andy. We know you're technic technologically uh, challenged. Hey. 
<laughs> Actually, no, but you know what? I got caught. I think what happened is I got, I had my <laughs> phone in my back pocket and it's, I was outside trying to get some work done before it started to rain and I got caught in the rain. And I think I got water in my phone in a little bit in the charging station because I was trying to link my phone and it kept coming up that I had water in my phone. I was like, what? And I just realized that I had my phone in my back pocket and that was probably, that end was probably up. So I might've got a couple. I get that uh, message all the time from my phone that I have water in the phone and it's water in the charging port all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably it. what happened. Okay. Well, so what I did was um, I sent out an email. Obviously, most of you guys know that because you're on here. Uh, and I requested that uh, if you had an opportunity to upload some photos to our Reddit site that had uh, that were taken with your cell phone. Um, and I just checked there a few minutes ago, and it looked like we had a few people did that. So I appreciate uh, those of you that did. Um, I actually went through and pulled some photos and put them up myself. So we got some photos to look at there. I grabbed uh, just before the meeting started. I grabbed a couple of uh youtube videos on tricks for cell phones and some stuff like that there are literally thousands and thousands of youtube videos out there for you guys uh, as far as cell phone photography goes uh as well as um uh there's uh cell phone photography schools and and classes and uh all kind of stuff as far as that goes uh, so plenty of stuff to look at as far as how to use your cell phone, other than just pull it out of your pocket and take a picture. Um, and actually, uh, Jim, uh, Jim was with me yesterday. I was using my cell phone a little bit, Jim and Dennis and Suzanne. And, uh, I got one pretty good shot, uh, that I took with my cell phone. I posted it. It's in the, it's in my cell phone pictures. I was, I was pretty happy with it. It, I didn't do anything to it. It is exactly the way it came off my camera and I didn't have camera on raw or anything like that. That's just the way it was. So we'll take a look at that here in a little while, but I think we'll start out with two videos and then we'll pop over to Reddit and take a look at those. Um, and we'll see where we're at as far as time goes that way. The two videos aren't really, aren't really that long. Uh, I think one is, <laughs> One is a minute and 47 seconds, and the other one is like uh, 18 minutes. So we'll watch those two guys, those two videos. And if y'all have a particular video that you like, we can watch that as well. Or, um, But then we'll stop. We'll jump over to Reddit and take a look at those. And we'll put together a impromptu Zoom meeting tonight since we didn't get to go meet in person. Yeah, sorry. It's not your fault. You didn't make it rain, did you? No. Was you doing a rain dance? No. Oh, okay. I think I think uh, Margie was. She's been telling me it was going to rain since like like uh, March. I think. <clears throat> I've been getting I've been getting messages and and phone calls and all kind of stuff about the rain coming. So, uh, then I woke up this morning. I get any texting me. Uh, <clears throat> so. Yep. Yep. I needed the rain. I don't want to get out there and water the sea <laughs> garden. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me share my screen here. We'll jump over and watch a couple YouTube videos. Uh, let's see here. Share screen. Share sound. Optimize video clip. Desktop one. Share. And do you all see YouTube? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right, we'll start out with uh, this one here. Let me make it a little bigger. And this one is five phone photography ideas in 90 seconds. But it's a minute and 47 seconds long, so I'm not sure about that. There we go.
Okay, Margie, you should have loved that. That was all props. Yep. I just wish I had, you know, it, what makes it so nice for some of these that you are showing is they do have the props, but they also have other people helping that photographer. Yep. Set everything up, you know? Yep, yep. Um, okay, let's watch the little longer one. So this one is 13 smartphone photography tips and tricks. And where's, oh, there's play. Okay, big screen and play. So maybe you've got the latest full frame camera with advanced eye tracking and lenses that can achieve wafer thin depth of field. Maybe you've got a medium format digital camera with a host of expensive lenses. Maybe you've got a Fujifilm X series camera, lightweight and easy to take with you. Maybe you've got a Leica camera that produces stunning images with those Leica colors. Maybe you've got a little Ricoh GR camera that fits in your pocket but has an APS-C size sensor and produces high quality shots. Maybe you shoot on film. Maybe you shoot on medium format film. If you're a photographer, the chances are that you have spent time and money in accumulating a fantastic camera system that produces high quality results. So why on earth would you ever choose to shoot on your phone? Well, it's certainly not because they're great cameras. They're not great cameras. They've got a tiny little sensor that makes these mushy images that they add a load of digital sharpening to, to sort of correct for that. They're not very pleasant to shoot with. The screen's difficult to see in bright light. You can't get a level shot with it very easily because there's no viewfinder, there's no tactile buttons. In short, phone cameras are rubbish. But it's their rubbishness that's one of their superpowers. Let me explain. So there are three great things about the camera in your phone. Firstly, you have it with you most of the time. Even if you have a tiny pocket-sized camera, you still have to have thought about taking it out with you. Your phone's one of those things you just have with you by default. Secondly, you don't look very conspicuous holding a phone. Well, not as much as you do a camera. People are really used to seeing people with their phones out, so you'll blend in more. And that will allow you to get images in situations where a camera may make you stand out more and may make people react differently to you. And thirdly, Bear with me on this one. They're very limited cameras. And what I mean by that is that they're not versatile. They work okay in some situations and in others they struggle. And when conditions are optimal for them, the quality is only passable, it's not exceptional. So why is that a good thing? Because by far the most critical factor in image quality isn't the camera, it's the photographer and the decisions that they make. And while having all those lenses and wide apertures, dynamic range, intelligent eye tracking, all that stuff is great, it does do two things. Firstly, it encourages you to fall back on those things when making your shot. Secondly, and this is especially relevant if you take multiple lenses and accessories out with you, it brings a lot of choice. And choice is the enemy of creativity. Working to limitations forces us to problem solve it gives us parameters that our creativity has to live between. When you can't rely on your camera to produce beautiful looking images, you have to fall back on the most basic fundamentals of creating good photography. Composition, lighting, colour and tone, storytelling, the decisive moment. In short, your skill and creativity in your ability to visualise an image. If your image quality is going to be passable at best, how do you make your shots stand out? Even if you can't bear to attempt any serious work with your phone camera when you could simply take out your Sony or your Canon or your Leica, you should still attempt to shoot on your phone because it's a fantastic exercise in improving your photography. And there are lots of great photographers out there creating stunning work on their phones. And it's not about buying the latest iPhone. All those cameras are just incrementally different degrees of mediocre. But a mediocre camera doesn't necessarily mean a mediocre shot. Because there are different kinds of photographs. Some rely on high quality equipment, like environmental portraits shot on a medium or a large format camera. Some rely on specialist equipment, such as difficult to capture exotic wildlife. 
but some types of shots work fine on something as simple as a phone. Something like high contrast light and shadow, for example. Take a look at these shots by Kathy Ryan from her series Office Romance. Kathy Ryan has been the Director of Photography for the New York Times Magazine for over 30 years. The New York Times building is situated on 8th Avenue on the west side of Midtown Manhattan. It was designed with white ceramic rods covering the exterior in order to control light and heat coming into the building. One day, Ryan noticed the amazing shadows being cast by these rods as sunlight streamed into a stairwell, so she took out her phone and made a picture. She shared the image to her Instagram feed, and this was the start of Ryan's love affair with the relationship between the New York Times building and the sunlight, a project that was eventually to turn into office romance. The images evoke an almost meditative sense of harmony and quietness that fills in stark juxtaposition to the realities of the fast-paced, high-pressure world of meetings and deadlines that occur in these offices. Some images are more figurative, some venture more into abstraction, but they're all held together by this recurring feeling of stillness and calm. You can almost hear them, the muffled sound of the city outside, the quiet hum of the air conditioner. They're largely in black and white, and any colour ones have a very minimal palette. Yet for me, they evoke a warmth, a sense of contemplation. And a phone is the perfect camera for a series like this. These are opportunistic photos, so something that you carry on you, that requires minimal setup, is perfect. The semi-abstract nature and high contrast look means that these images don't need to be made on a high-end camera system. There's no need for a shallow depth of field, for lenses that can resolve fine detail, for 14 stops of dynamic range or perfectly rendered skin tones. These things don't matter here. What does matter is how carrying a phone with you makes you think about what images you can make with it. Working to these limitations forces you to think creatively. Taking all that choice away focuses your mind. I was particularly drawn to this shot, and I think this is a great example of how you can use a phone camera to make an amazing shot. This is an image of a £612 window being replaced, but it's almost balletic in its composition the semi-silhouetted figures against this tapestry of rigid horizontal lines, the way all the people are working together, and that subtle reference to Joe Rosenthal's raising the flag on Iwo Jima creates an almost comedic contrast between that iconic war image and the mundanity of replacing an office window. This image is great, but it's great because Kathy Ryan knows how to frame a shot, understands light and contrast, and most critically, knows when to release the shutter, the decisive moment. These things are enough to make a great shot with a simple and fairly mediocre camera. So going out to take photos and only taking your phone camera can be a great exercise in your photographic discipline. When we're packing our photography bags, it's easy to worry about all the images that we might miss if we don't take this lens or that filter or that flash gun or that full frame body. But when we actually start to make images, it's easier to switch your mind into that kind of positive mindset. And the question becomes less, what can't we make without X, Y, and Z? And more, what images can we make if we only use our phone camera? And Kathy Ryan and many other photographers have shown us that it's possible to make outstanding, publishable work with your phone camera. So with that in mind, here are 13 practical tips on getting great shots out of your phone. One, before you do anything else, clean your lens. Just give it a wipe. Ideally with a lens cloth, but if you don't have one, just do it with your t-shirt. I wouldn't recommend doing that with your high-end expensive lenses, but phone lenses are generally pretty rugged but I too often see those hazy, washed out phone photos because they've been taken through a lens with greasy fingerprints all over it. Two, turn your screen brightness up and hold the phone with both hands. Treat it as much like a camera as you can. Be aware of where your lenses are located and keep your fingers out of the way, especially when using those wider focal lengths. 
I also recommend putting it in airplane mode to stop people calling you and interrupting you mid-shot. Three, switch on and use the rule of thirds grid lines on your phone. And don't do it to use the rule of thirds, but because when you're not looking through a viewfinder, but rather holding your phone screen out in front of you, it's very easy to miss a line or to tilt your phone accidentally. Use those lines to get your horizontals and verticals nice and straight. So I'm not advocating that you should always be using the rule of thirds, but on the flip side, it's sometimes good to have a starting point to develop a composition from. It's kind of easier than starting with no guidance. It will just help you get into that mind space where you're analyzing your frame from a compositional perspective. Four, download Lightroom onto your phone and use it as your camera by tapping this little camera icon here. Put it into professional mode and it will give you loads more controls than your camera app on your phone. It will also allow you to shoot in RAW and stop that nasty automatic digital over sharpening that so many phones like to bake into your images. The app is free to download and use. If you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you can sync your presets and your photo library, but you don't need a subscription to use it. Number five. So while I just told you to download Lightroom onto your phone, that doesn't mean that you have to edit your photos on your phone. Of course, if you want to edit them on your phone, then please go ahead. But it's just that personally, I find the tiny screen and fiddly controls not really ideal. I prefer to concentrate on taking my shots at the time and then taking them home and editing them on my computer later. And if you're using Lightroom through a Creative Cloud subscription, those images will already be in your Lightroom catalog when you boot up Lightroom on your computer. Although personally, I like to use Lightroom Classic or Photoshop over Lightroom CC. Post-processing the image is a fairly important part for me, so I prefer to have that little bit of extra control, but that's just how I shoot. There's no right or wrong way. Your style may suit editing as you go, whatever works for you, but I feel I can be a bit more objective about my images if I leave a time separation between taking them and editing them. Number six, look for strong lighting contrast. Phone sensors are tiny, and so giving it something that's easy for it to deal with, like strong lighting, is a good way to get great shots. Try exposing for the highlights and pulling down the exposure when you take the shot. This can look good when there's very hard light, very defined shadows. It's extra important to get the image as close to your final vision as possible in camera, as there's generally not as much latitude for pushing phone images in post. Look for patterns and shapes cast by hard sunlight. Look for silhouettes, look for strong colors, Try shooting into the light. Number seven. Now, this may seem obvious to a lot of people, but remember to shoot horizontally as well as vertically. Remember to shoot in landscape mode as well as portrait. Also, you don't need to stick to the aspect ratio that your phone takes photos natively in, whether that's 16 by nine or two by three. You can try and shoot maybe square or 10 by 8 that's a particular favorite of mine because it can change the balance of your shot and sometimes it can make a shot that doesn't really work work together very well number eight go black and white this may sound oversimplified and obvious but choosing to shoot in black and white can help greatly with the phone images black and white is a lot more forgiving with low quality images it can help eliminate those nasty digital color renditions Phones can also generally get quite good close-up shots. And when you turn a detail shot into black and white, it can help emphasize form and texture. But I'm not in any way saying you should always shoot in black and white. Um, it's just one way to simplify your thinking process even more. Because with black and white, you're reducing your composition down even more to just its fundamental building blocks of dark and light. Number nine go abstract. Try thinking less about representing something figurative and try thinking about your frame as a way of balancing colour and shape and form. Now, phones are great for this, if for no other reason than you carry them around with you all the time and abstract shots are everywhere. You might see an abstract shot on the bus to work or while you're waiting in a dentist's waiting room or going up a flight of stairs in a gallery or something. And it doesn't have to be fully abstract either you can start to introduce this practice in your figurative work. And shooting abstract will 
help you learn to balance all the elements in your shot. It's a great learning process. Number 10, take advantage of your phone's small size. You can flip your phone upside down and get your lens really close to surfaces and objects. You can shoot through small gaps where a bigger lens would struggle. Number 11, try using filters that you already own. You just need to hold it over your phone lens. So you can use a polarizer to eliminate reflections or get deeper blues in the sky. Uh, a pro mist can help take away that digital look, especially with a phone, that's very useful. Um, you could cut out uh, some colored gels, cut out a little square and stick it over your lens and then use that as a black and white filter, maybe a red or a yellow. Number 12, look for interesting things, interesting scenes. If you can't rely on your camera to make a nice image, you have to make the image something of interest. This could be something funny, it could be something weird. It could just be a scene where a particular color has arisen as a theme or a juxtaposition between two elements. Use the photographic frame to alert people to those small, beautiful things that are too easily missed as we go about our busy lives. Finally, number 13, take your time. We're very conditioned to just sort of whip out our phones and take a quick snapshot. And if you're trying to capture that decisive moment and it's happening right now, then that may be the right approach. But if you're taking a portrait or you're taking some architecture or a landscape or some detail shots, take your time to get it right. That's cool. So a phone camera wouldn't be my camera of choice. For the type of photography that I personally like, it's not really versatile enough, but I do really enjoy the challenge of shooting with it. And if I'm honest, I've got a fair few shots from it that I'm really proud of. And there's one thing I'm sure any photographer will tell you, which is they'll have been told at some point, that's an amazing photograph. You must have a great camera, which is kind of annoying because they'll have spent years honing their craft and it's not meant in a bad way. So you don't want to get all defensive and correct them. So it's always rather satisfying to be able to say, thanks, but actually I just shot that on my phone. But the main reason that you should aspire to shoot good photos on your phone is because the best way to learn and to improve your photography is to take pictures. The more you do it, the better you will get. So turn those times when you're not going out with a specific intent to take photos into potential photography sessions. What images can you make while you're waiting for the bus? while you're taking your kid to school, hanging out the washing, waiting for a meeting to start. Condition your mind to see potential photos through the mundane, through the ordinary. It'll make you a better photographer the next time you pick up your camera. Or maybe even one of those shots you take on your phone will turn out to be your next masterpiece. I'll see you next time. Okay, guys, let's stop the share there for a minute and just talk. What did you think of that? I thought it was pretty good. Gave me yeah, a couple of extra good. ideas. I like um, the black and white shots. Yeah, they were good. And that, the lady with the uh, the office romance was, yeah. that, that stuff was really good. That's um, what I like. What, what I really liked about it was in... in some of the things that he that he said are things that I've said before is to be challenged with what you have. You know, I've I've told you guys, I don't know how many times, let's go do a photo walk and bring one lens and you all bring a lens that goes from 24 to 9,000. Uh, and you kind of defeat the purpose. Um, but, you know, like he, he mentioned, you know, if you're if you're challenged with what you have and you have to work with what you have. So if you go out and shoot with just a 50 millimeter or just a 25 or a, or a 35 millimeter or just a 200 millimeter and that's it then you're challenged to get the photos or get the shots with what you have um and it's the same thing with the iphone or the samsung or whatever yeah they got multiple cameras on the back and they can zoom in and zoom out and all that stuff 
but you're you're challenged to do something with what you have and what you have is kind of limited um so you got to go out and shoot with that and i i always said and i've always said that that it it makes you think more you know it makes you um pay more attention to what it is that you're doing instead of going oh i want to take a picture across the street well you can't do that with your iphone you have to walk across the street or with your 200 millimeter, you just stand on one side and shoot across to the other side. Um, so that was something that I picked up out of that. I really liked a lot the way he said that is just, you know, being challenged to think about what it is that you're using and how you can use that to get the picture. And I think that will make you a better photographer when you're using a lens, you know, when you're using your full size camera, your regular camera. Um, so I challenge all of you again, do that get your cameras out when you go somewhere and say i'm only going to use a 50 millimeter what it's raining so hard here i can't see the route of the road 25 feet from my house uh oh, well i was going to uh, say something that i have said before from time to time and that is any one of those things think of them think of them as a tool and the tool that you need to do what it is you want to do. Okay. Like what I enjoyed seeing is when he took the cell phone, flipped it upside down and put it down by the ground so he could shoot up underneath the stems of the flowers into the sky. I thought, yeah, there is a perfect example of a tool. So even if you had a couple of other uh, lenses around your belt or a camera with a, a zoom that could do a lot, you might not be able to do what he did with the camera flipped over, the cell phone camera flipped over on the ground and to get the shot that he otherwise just plain would not have got. Right, not to mention- It's a um, tool in the toolbox. And, and not to mention, uh, like myself, my knees are getting bad. My back's getting bad. And I feel, if I do manage to get down on the ground to get that picture, I need two people there to help me get back up. Uh, and I, I'm, yeah. I'm doing fine with this right here. See, I just yeah. had a couple of tunnels. So using my cell phone is great. Yeah. yeah. And uh, honestly, one of the shots that you'll see of mine from that I posted was I shot with the camera standing up and I turned it upside down to get it down lower where I wanted it. So... Yes, quick and easy, nice and easy. Um, but anyhow, I, 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 the cameras and the cameras in these cell phones are pretty good. I, I know he was saying that they're pretty well rubbish, but as long as you're not using them to print, uh, you know, wall size murals with them, and you're using them to post stuff on the Reddit, post stuff on the Instagram, post stuff on the Facebook, uh, I think they're pretty damn good. You know, just uh, I, but one of the things I, uh, realized i may have been using it before but i didn't i do have lrc on my phone but i didn't know that uh you press the the logo lrc and it brings up the lrc system to operate your phone yeah, yeah i didn't know that either yeah you can use the use the lrc to take your pictures and stuff and it does give you uh it gives you the option for raw files and for raw photos and stuff like that now the newer iPhones, uh, like the one I have, the 14, um, I think the 13 did it. They will shoot in RAW. Yeah, you can get a you can get a RAW file, which is actually a pretty big file uh, with quite a bit of information on it. Uh, in it, as far as uh, getting that picture. Now, the nice thing about the the Lightroom is that it it puts it on Lightroom Cloud rather you know and and saves it that way, and then you can you can pull it onto your computer at home. I think there's a way to do that with regular Lightroom Classic, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure about that. I know he mentioned um, that it goes to the Lightroom Cloud version, which I don't use. I use Lightroom Classic myself, um, but I'll have to investigate into that a little bit to see how that works. Yeah, the cool, part, also... of that, cool part of that is that Lightroom recognizes the photo you don't have to teach it from another folder somewhere else in your computer hey this is a picture it yeah. knows as you take it um 
There are other apps uh, as far as on your phone that you can download that allow you to shoot in raw and give you a lot more control over the phone. Now, obviously, you don't get the control that you get out of a out of a DSLR or, or your uh, your mirrorless camera, your R6 and all that stuff. But you can download apps. Uh, one of the ones I use on my phone is called uh, Camera Plus um, that allows you to do a lot more. Um, that's a, I don't know if that's an iPhone only one, but it's one that I have on my iPhone and I like it. Um, but honestly, a lot of the pictures I take, I just do with the regular, uh, camera app from, from Apple. It works really well. I have, uh, expert raw on my phone. Okay. So that's another one that would be, that might be an Android one. Yeah. So anyhow, there's some maps out there to do that as well, but I really liked I like that that video that was good. I'll post up the uh, the links to it here in a minute. And um, I thought they were pretty good, pretty good videos. I, the The first one was was interesting. The second one I thought was really good. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me post them in chat right now. That's the first yeah, one. That uh, expert raw that I have on my camera was an update for from Samsung for the camera program on here. Oh, was it? yeah so there's the second one um so those are the two videos we just watched i think uh i'm probably going to re-watch that second one i kind of like that i thought that was a pretty good video um and uh okay so i am going to uh let me get over here and make sure i have reddit open on some screen somewhere yeah there it is just reload that screen and make sure we got everything that's been posted recently. Nope, we didn't. We got a few more. Marty, Marty got some posted up there. All right. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. We're going to jump over to Reddit and uh, we'll take a look at some cell phone photos from uh, us. See what we got. And share. And do you see Reddit? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to click on that, and Marty starts out with a spider. What's in my bathroom? Yeah, you want the bigger you want the bigger version of it. There it is. Okay. It, it was in my bathroom on the wall, and I just like the shadow of it. Can I can I stop right here? Yeah. How do you get the black background? I have. Worked and worked and oh. going to the dark mode gives me everything black, but it's still when I bring up the, the photos, they end up white again. I don't with know the background. I don't know. All right. <laughs> I I honestly don't I, we because we talked about this before and I tried to look yes. I couldn't find anything. I couldn't either. I know other people have a problem with it. The themes have disappeared when. But it upgraded everything. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. All right, Marty, what kind of cell phone are you using? It's a 13 Pro Max. Okay. iPhone 13 Pro Max. That's pretty sharp. Not bad. Well, there's a there's a there's a point in it. If you get too close, it, it pixelates and then if you don't get close enough you can't get the details so you have to kind of know exactly where it is <laughs> and so, if you zoom in if you zoom in you lose it so, so you have to use your camera does the 13 pro max have the macro version macro uh, settings in it um i don't know probably not i don't know <laughs> i know in the in the 14 pro max there is i point and shoot <laughs> <laughs> i don't which is the point yeah, of your phone? 14, 14 Pro Max automatically goes to micro if you went ahead and set it up that way. Yeah, so it'll, whenever it'll, you it'll get be. real close. Uh -huh. yeah, All right, it, I'll go look. Hold on. Yep. Yeah. Anyhow, so you have to find that. Oh, nice man. shot. It's interesting. It's got uh, um, it's got some of the stuff that the guy talked about. It's definitely got the contrast between the darks and the white and the, and the lighter stuff. Uh, which, according to that gentleman that we just watched, that's the way to shoot an iPhone picture or or a cell phone picture. So I kind of like it. 
Mm-hmm. We're not, not going to do like major critiques on these, but just uh, That's okay. just some words, you know, a few things here and there. But pretty cool. Let's see what uh, what do we have uh, next. We have feet in water. There you go, Margie. That's right. <laughs> it might be a little crooked, so. <laughs> That's okay. I just downloaded them real quick. I didn't edit anything, so. But think, I mean, think about it as uh, mm-hmm. exposure-wise. Um, you know, it's it's kind of it's got some a little bit of a harsh lighting because you got some highlights and definitely some, you know, the bright sky that was reflecting there. Right. But you can see down into the water, into the rocks and all that kind of stuff. So the cell phone done a pretty good job with exposure mm-hmm. back in here and and, you know, around. Not bad. Any other comments? Uh, right. That was at our picnic. The, the one thing that I do like about that last video is he said, use a filter. Right. You have filters you can use. So I like using polarized filters for something like this. And that would have been perfect to put the polarized filter in front of that. I've used the SD filter. On the front. I've put it on the front of mine whenever I've taken some. And then... I have the manual, I can, you know, manually adjust it whenever I've taken some shots when I've been out um, of water. Uh-huh. So he said that, I was like, yep, I've been doing that. All right, let's see what's, what we got next. Oh, look at that. Let's get that one open. Yeah, nice micro shop. That's nice. <clears throat> Are these edited or unedited, Marty? No, it's straight from my phone. Okay, that's that's good. That was during our um, IHOP thing, where we look into the tissue paper. That one. Oh yeah, paper. yeah. Mm-hmm. You can see a little bit on the left, the pink, but. I didn't do that shot very well with the tissue paper. That's my shot. <laughs> After seeing Gracie's, nobody did it very well. <laughs> She's a stinker. <laughs> but I like it. At least you could see the pollen and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um, close up. Definitely like that close up. Pretty neat. All right. <laughs> Oh, that's for you, Margie. I just Thank threw you. It in there. I, just, <laughs> I just threw that one in because Margie was talking about props, and I was at the um down at the yacht, and there was just this comb on the rocks, and I took a picture just for but, you, Margie. But look at it, you know. If you took that comb away, it'd be a bland photo. <laughs> but the putting the comb in and add it to that photo. It was all for you, Margie. That's so sweet. Thank you. But that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not sure if I would want to touch it or not, but that's okay. I'm not gonna comb. Well, I don't have any hair to comb, so I'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's our shoes. There you go. Here's props again. Props, props, yep. props. Margie likes her props. Yep. Well, it elevates it. Look at it. it. Without the shoes, you would have a pretty bland photo. But with the shoes, it just elevated it. Yeah. I would have done the shoes like they were walking into the water. I know. I thought of that after I took the picture. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, like spread them out the and step. Yeah. Yeah. I thought of that. That would have been neat. And having the prints like, uh, Dennis said, in the sand. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool, too. Just to, like, okay, I took my shoes off, and I'm now in the water somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be a neat uh, neat idea. Yep. Yep. A little closer to the water. 
Well, I didn't want them to wash away. <laughs> what yeah, they were definitely fly, they would definitely float away. Very good though. I like that. Yeah. Sorry for the clock in the background. I want to see what's I want to see what's going to come out of the hole. <laughs> uh, this one, you can see I zoomed in a little bit, and you can see it kind of pixelated a little. Yeah. Yeah. One mm -hmm. of one of the things you have to remember with the with the cameras, uh, or with the iPhones, I should say, is that it's not a mechanical zoom; it's a digital zoom. So when you zoom, right. it things things don't come out as good usually. Uh, yeah. Now. Some of them, like like the iPhones now, and I know Annie's phone's got like cameras the whole across the whole back of the phone. They they yeah. pick from lens when you tell it to zoom. So if you go from a from a standard to a one x to a two x to a three x, it goes to a different lens. Uh, so you get a better zoom out of that. But eventually, you get out of the you get out of those, and you end up into um, the digital zoom part. And we all know that digital zoom is not as good. So. Just yeah. mind when you're taking your pictures. Yeah, it's still a cool, it's proof. still a cool shot. I mean, it's a nice little mushroom, and like Annie said, I'm waiting for I don't know a chick mom, chick, a chick monk, or I don't know a snake hey. to come up out of that hole. Yeah, what happens. Yeah, I'm not hanging around to find out. With my lucky <laughs> spider, snake spine, I don't care about a snake. I don't care about a chipmunk. But with my lucky, yeah. like the a tarantula or something come up out of there. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with Brian on that one. Snake don't bother me. Chipmunk don't bother me. But uh, you can have the spiders. This one needs to be cropped, but just a little bit in the top right corner or top left corner, I should say. Well, there, and I need to crop that guy out on the right. I don't like yeah. him in there. <laughs> <laughs> but it it was this little old couple, and it, it this is at Keystone, and it was like. They just were walking arm in arm down to the beach. And I was, the, I was in the parking lot, so I did zoom in a little bit. But um, the people, the younger couple that was with them, they were kind of like looking at me like, why are you taking a picture of them? But it was just <laughs> cute. And, and I didn't show faces. It was their back. So yeah, I just thought it was cute. An old couple going down to the lake. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It tells a nice little story. You kind of wonder how long they've been married or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, probably a long time. Yeah. I don't know. They're still holding on to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but some, then, some of them actually still like each other. I said, then again, then maybe they haven't been married long enough, you know. Yeah, yeah really. Mm -hmm. Margie, Margie, I can tell you that Carol and I hold on to each other because we have to. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Out of necessity. Uh, my, my parents used to, in fact, I have a picture on my entertainment stand of my, my mom and my dad walking down the country lane from where our family reunion always was, and they're holding hands. They, they always did. When they were go for a walk, they'd hold hands. So, and they were married almost. Just shy of 50 years when my dad passed away. You zoom in on this one? Right. Well, yeah. it was through glass and low ah. light and yeah. This was at the aviary. Oh, that was at the aviary. Right. He's still cute. Yeah, he is. So, yeah, the quality is not that great, but. He's pretty good. Yeah, like it's still a good shot. I mean, it's definitely something that you could post up on on Facebook or Instagram or on Reddit for us to look at. Well, it is on Reddit for us to look at. But, yeah. yeah, it's it's there's nothing wrong with the quality. You're not going to print that as, as a wall mural, but still. Uh, but the toucan, I think I put the toucan in there. He's better. <laughs> You'll see. I, the next, I think he's next. Yeah. See, now he's better. He yeah. was back a little further from the glass. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I and put he, I put that right on the glass. Well, yeah, but I mean, he is 
physically a little bit further. Oh, yeah. Not only that, not only that, he's a bigger bird than the other one. Well, that too, and there was more light in his eyes. Can his area? There was more light than oh, yeah. the other one too. Mm -hmm. he did a good job. He got the catch light in his eyes, which is very good. Yep. Mm -hmm. I like him. <laughs> yeah, he looks good. That's a good one. Yeah. I like. I do too. Yep. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, I remember you. I might have driven down that road at some point. That's pretty. Yep. That was nice. Is that at Forbes? No, I think I think that's up at Ohio Pow. When we yeah. uh, Kentucky Nom, I think. Yeah, that's uh, what I, mean. I, I might have driven down that road at some point. <laughs> probably. If it was a Kentucky knob, yeah, we've driven down that road. I think that's the one. Yeah. Because it was in with the other pictures like that, I think. I don't know. I hurried up and took pit grabbed pictures off my phone. <laughs> but nice, nice shot. Uh I like it. I like the con I like the the I don't know, I just I I just like the shot. That's pretty cool. Thanks. Almost looks like yeah. a painting with the trunks the way they are, and the light the way it was caught on the trunks. Mm-hmm. Nice shadows on there too. Yeah, nice nice <laughs> enough that uh, nice enough shadows and contrast that I would say uh, try that in black and white. Yeah. Oh, I thought I was going to get something from Margie on that one. Yeah, I thought about it. And I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those were 10 from Marty. Marty. Let me click on this just so it makes it quicker so we get there. Okay. All right. What do we get here? We got one from Bob. Um, there's uh, two from uh, my uh, cell phone. I have a old uh, cell phone, about three years old XR uh, cell phone. And I volunteered at Bushy Run, and uh, I couldn't carry my normal camera, my Sony camera. And that's why the versatility of a cell phone is great, because you can just put it in your pocket, take it out. And uh, it works fine. I mean, the exposure, you don't have to mess around with the uh, aperture or anything like that. It just sets the uh, exposure, the ISO, and so forth. But I thought this was a good photo of a uh, gunsmith who uh, his hand's working at a, uh, trying to fix a... Uh, I am not sure what it is, whether it's a flintlock flint uh, of the uh, musket. Yep. But uh, again, it shows the versatility of an iPhone camera and how useful it is uh, to take photos uh, when you cannot carry your normal camera around with you. So um, uh, all I did was just like Marty said, point and shoot, and that's it. Yeah, nice composition, though. I like it. It really has some nice detail in it. And the colors are good. Hmm. Yeah, I like it a lot. And and like you said, like like Bob said, it's the camera he had with him. He didn't, he couldn't carry the other camera, so he has his camera. He at least can still take pictures. Right. Um, and no one anymore doubts about you taking pictures with your cell phone. They don't. They don't question you and stuff like mm -hmm. you now. In a in a reenactment or something like that, no one's going to question you anyhow. But. Um, mm -hmm when you start taking pictures with your cell phone, it's so normal anymore that no one really bothers you or questions about that. What it is you're doing or anything like that. Nice shot, Bob. Thank you. Did you, Oh yeah. You got a second one here. Yeah. This one is, uh, uh, there were some spectators up on the hillside and I had to chase them off the hillside. So I had to keep guard that nobody was there, but I was able to take this vantage point of the British soldiers firing against the Native Americans with the crowd in the foreground, just to kind of give you a, a sense of depth, perception. And um, again, all I did was just point and shoot. Uh, you, you can't do too much with this camera. You just have to kind of aim it. And um, the exposure was fine. I mean, if I had my own camera, I would have to probably get a, a bigger lens. Uh, have the right aperture exposure the ISO to capture everything, but the iPhone is just really nice. It just did everything for me like a point and shoot camera. 
and it done it it done it quite well. I mean, really look at the exposure there, guys. Yeah. Then you got the the flashes from the from the guns. Too. Right. Correct. Yeah, correct. So that's black, pretty good. Yeah. From the black powder. Yep. yep. Nicely done. And it's a good uh, documentary shot. You're you're documenting what was going on, the reenactors, the crowd there that's watching. You know, there's a lot going on. That's a good shot for Bushy Run if they needed it. You know. Yeah, I, I uploaded that and plus sixty others to uh, their uh, to their Google Drive, and they use it periodically for uh, advertisements, Facebook, and yeah. so forth. Very cool. Good one, Bob. Thank you. All right. Anybody guess whose picture this is? <laughs> Archie. Uh, I that be, that, that's not Trixie, is it? No, not at all. No. I um, am experimenting for the first time with the uh, 14 Pro Max. And um, these are unedited. I'm just experimenting. The... First time I've ever taken it out to use it was this fall. You have a big backyard, Margie. No, no, no. That's Angel's backyard. Yeah, she's got 50 acres. I take the dogs up there and let them loose. And they I have my a question, dog. Marge. Huh? I have a question on yes. focusing. Um, uh -huh. Can you touch the point you want the camera to focus at and it stays there for the picture yeah like the way you have it here if you were holding the camera perfectly still and you touched on the area where the dog is that's where its primary focus would be i actually it can touch it in more than way. one i can what touch it in, is they do focus different distances i i i can touch it in more than one place for it to focus in more than one place oh. Okay. But I'm just learning that. When I took some of the uh, garden club that I, I belong to, uh, I was able to touch, and I think there were about seven or eight people there. I touched each one of their faces, mm -hmm. and it focused on each one of their faces. Okay, so it accumulates that, uh, it adds that to the area that needs to stay in focus. Yes, uh, okay. And this is all, like I said, I'm just learning on the uh, this, yeah. this camera. There's a lot to the camera that I just don't know about. Yeah, because your back, your background's all in uh, sharp, sharp focus, and Trixie's Trixie's out of focus a little. She's soft. Well, that's only because she ran in front of me when I was trying to do the background. Yeah, Trixie, was moving, <laughs> Trixie was moving, but if you look at the grass around her. It ain't yeah. soft because it wasn't in focus. It's soft because she was moving. Yeah, yeah. I see that now. Yeah, I see um, the foot in the air, foot in the air and yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the field was almost infinite. Oh, I mean, that's what I was gonna say. Overall, if you look at the picture, I mean, look at the exposure. Yeah, it's the whole way through. I mean, it's got good. You can see the clouds. The exposure is what really impresses me with these phones. Is and I know it's the I know it's the computer and stuff like that that does it. You know the uh, the the iPhone computer that's built into it. But look at the exposure, really. Yeah. The sky's good. The the background's good. The foreground's good. Yep. You know, yeah, at the two thirds up, you look at the trees on the right. They're as sharp as the grass is by your toes. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, it's it's pretty darn good. All right. Let's see. What else we got here? This is one of the very, very, very first pictures I took. And it just, uh, it hasn't been edited, but it sort of gave you this weird look about it. Sort look of up. like, uh, what am I trying to think of? Uh, that type of... Uh... Fish eye. Thank you. Hmm. Yes. So, so I'm assuming you shot this by touching the 0.5 camera's lens. I have no idea what I touched. You did. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah. Uh, so the with the iPhone, and I'm sure with the other phones, with the iPhone, you can change the change the lens from 0.5 to 1 to 2 to 3. Mm -hmm. uh, so at 0.5, it gets this kind of a strange kind of look around the outside edges. But yeah. it really it really does these cool, cool features or cool ideas 
when you use it for this type of picture. Scott, yeah, I like, I like it. it. It just gives you something that's a little bit different. And it's pretty cool. But you have to be careful doing that uh, with people in it because it does weird, yeah. <laughs> weird things yeah. to the people. Yeah. I like the way it did the clouds, you know? Yeah, the, the, the sky is really, really cool. And then, and then the, the waves in the hills make it nice. Just crop crop off this, the area there on the right a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Where, that's where the pool oh, is. That's yeah. your swimming pool. Yeah. But really cool. I mean, I love the 0.5 on my camera. I use it a lot, actually, for my on my phone. I'm experimenting, and I don't know what I did. On these, yeah, I, I can guarantee you, you did the point five. It's pretty <laughs> will, cool, though. Yeah, I will. I will positively guarantee that. Well, the meta, the metadata, you will show that somewhere in in the phone or in the computer. Yeah, it would. This, the 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 info for the iPhone will show you that. Yeah. This one here is how sharp she came out. She's really sharp. If you yeah. bring it up, you can see how sharp she is and uh that surprised me there yep my buddy sky <laughs> yeah that's my buddy you back off uh -uh, she's <laughs> my buddy <laughs> as long as i have ice cream it's my best friend okay. <laughs> I'm I, don't very proud. A, I don't have to have ice cream for her to be my best friend well. so, I, I, I actually felt her ribs today. I am so proud. She's been on a diet for a couple of months, and I finally felt her ribs. Oh, today. I'm, I'm coming up this weekend to fix that. We're yeah. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> but He's bringing ice cream. <laughs> oh, baby, I, I know. I mean, cool. That's all right, Brad. We're stopping at the at the uh, pie pie shop on, uh, after, on Wednesday, you know. Okay. So I will have to make a stop on the way down. <laughs> as as I was as I was saying here, um, or as as Margie said, I'm sorry, how sharp she is. And if you look, mm -hmm. because where Margie picked to focus, and I'm assuming that you probably touched your screen to to focus on her. Uh huh. Your background, probably. you lose that little know. bit of background. So if you let the camera focus by itself, it it focuses as in, in, to indefinite. You know, it focuses at infinity, but by touching her, it allows that background to go a little bit soft. Yeah. You know, so that's, you know, kind of cool way to use your camera. And you can, you can do that pretty good with the, with the iPhone. And I assume with the Android as well. Yep. All right, let's grab another one here. No, this is this is basically the same shot from earlier, but this is not a not at the point five. This is probably a, just a regular one. Yeah, a big difference in the. Oh, mm -hmm. man, definitely. Yeah. Still good though. I mean, the, the exposure is still good. The, yeah. I, I, the, that was that was a good day to shoot with the clouds. Yeah, yeah I love clouds. Yeah, I mean the the exposures are just uh, that's really what always impresses me is that these things are able to get like Bob said with his camera he'd have to fool around and and try to figure out the exposure to try to get everything and then you you do all that and then, and these things you pull them out and take a picture and you end up with an exposure like this and you're like why. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I didn't do, I mean, I didn't, uh, I have not processed any of this. This is straight out of the camera. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It looks good. I'd like to see that one actually in black and white too, Marge. No, not going to happen. Yeah, it still would. That would be a good black and white picture right there. I'm telling you. A good one. Right, Dennis? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, who else we got here? Oh, Margie, we got a couple more. Now, this is with my iPhone 7. Okay. So we're going back a, a few. Yeah, we're going back a few, and you have all seen that before. But that's a night shot. I was uh, walking Trixie, and I love the sunset, so I took out my phone and took a picture. Is what I did. And then I thought of Beth, because Beth does not like telephone wires, and I love them. 
Mm. Okay, so we're, we went, but you said iPhone 7, right? iPhone 7. I went so from we went a 7 from, to a 14. So we went from a 7 to a 14, which is a huge jump as far as camera quality and the ability of the camera or the ability of the phone. And you can see that this is pretty good. Okay, I would sure. be willing to bet if you went and took this picture, another sunset from this spot with your 14, it would you know, be a lot better. Yeah. It's a good it. thought. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't have any wires in it. <laughs> touch, touch them, they'd be gone. Yeah. I like yeah. the wires. But cool. Snapseed can get rid of wires. <laughs> yeah. This is unedited. This is uh, another picture, you know, uh, from the i7. And if you edit it, the clouds really, really come in nice and stormy looking. So I don't think it was as good as it should have been, only because of the clouds. I didn't edit it. So I don't think it took as good. Yeah, I think uh, you, with a little bit of editing, you could definitely bring them clouds out and make them better. And sharpen up the house. A bit, yeah. You know? But still, a good shot, a good exposure. The sky's not blown out. You got detail inside here. If you look in there, you know, there's yeah. detail there. Yeah. So it's a good exposure. And that's an iPhone 6. 7. 7. I'm sorry, 7. What I'd like to do is uh, find out when the Milky Way is and go up there and try to take a picture of it. And if I could take a picture of it, then everybody can go up there and take pictures of it. That's my little ice cream baby. <laughs> She's a banana split and her tongue is out. <laughs> Big blue eyes. I was going to put Gucci mom in there with her. Trixie's in a hoochie outfit and I didn't put her in there. I probably should have. Good sharp photo. Considering she was moving, it was, you know, she she's moving all over the place because she's a little nervous there. As you can see, she's hiding underneath the bench. Yeah. And uh, but it still got a pretty sharp photo of her. Yeah. But I think it's blown out in a couple of places because of that. I should have made it a little bit darker. The exposure. Yeah. 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 That's an I7. And then this one here. This is the I7 too, isn't it? It's an I7 too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was walking up all those freaking steps, <laughs> sidewalk to get back up to her house. And I saw that clouds and I love clouds. And then I saw the uh, plants and I thought, you know, so I got down on one of the steps and uh, <clears throat> my knees, and that's the picture I came up with. Good composition. I like it. Thank you. I like it. And again, good exposure. I mean, <laughs> it's... Yeah, for an I-7, I thought it was good. a good yeah. exposure. All right. That was those four... All and right. I added a few while you? this was on too. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll bounce through mine and then we'll go back and catch yours. Is this with your Max? This Pro? is the this was the uh, yeah, the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So you slowed it down? Um, well, of course you slowed it down, but this is straight out of camera. I didn't do anything to it. I didn't I um the the 14 Pro has the ability to do long exposures. Oh, that's right, it does. And that's what this is. I shot it straight. It's you know, straight out of camera. I pulled them off the iCloud today and uploaded them. I haven't done a thing to them. So you didn't have any problems yeah. with it being overexposed or anything straight out of the camera. No filter on there. That's nope. what I'm saying. Nope. I and, just, and, and, and that's I handheld too. too. I was on a motorcycle ride, so I didn't have anything with me but my phone. Hmm. Oh, I stopped up there to get some uh, to to. Well, I stopped up there to eat ice cream. Uh, surprise, hmm. surprise. Yeah, 
And how long was the exposure, Brian? Oh, not very long. What it does, and this is really cool. So what the iPhone does to do a long exposure like this is it takes a shot, but it takes a video. Um, what you have to do is you put the iPhone in live mode and it does a, a little tiny short video. It's about a second and a half, maybe. And then you have the options to do things with it, with that little video. So like you can loop it and make it look like the water's running over and over and over again. But one of the options is, is um, a long exposure. And it takes the movement and softens the movement. And that's how you end up with, the, with just the water and stuff like that that's moving. Um, it's a pretty cool process, uh, but you have to, to do it, you have to be in live mode on the phone. Huh. And you have to hold it steady, I assume. Yeah. Uh, but just for that, like I said, just for that second, it takes, it takes like two shots within that one, huh. one little second. Um, and then it uses the two to combine them to do these things. It's neat. Where do you I'll put it in live mode at, Brian? Is that like uh, the the slow motion one they have? No, it's not slow motion. It's it's actually it's... live mode. If your camera, if you open your camera in the top right hand corner, there's a little weird uh, bullseye. Mine has a line through yeah. it. If you hit that bullseye, that puts it in live mode. Okay. So if I don't anyone, know if you can see you... me, but it's right there. Hmm. Yeah. If any if anyone ever sends you a picture from an iphone and it moves or you hear a little bit of noise whenever that you open a picture up it was shot in live mode because it's a little tiny video is really what it is huh. yeah, i have that mode on my phone i've had it even on the iphone 7 which oh is yeah wild. it's been around for a long time yeah. yeah brian how large can you make your enlargements from that uh photo I don't know. I don't print from my, I don't, I've never tried printing from it. I wouldn't know. Uh, okay. If I'm, I, I'm under the impression that if I'm going to print a picture, it's going to come out of my real camera. Oh, okay. These, you know, I, I use my iPhone. I take a lot of pictures with it, and but they're all basically going to be just like you're seeing it here. I posted it here. I posted it on Facebook. Uh, I put it on Instagram, you know, that kind of thing, or I've, I've included them in a video that I made or something like that. Um, I don't really use my, my phone as my, my camera that I'm going to print from, but mm. can you print you? I'm, you probably print an eight by 10 out of that with no problem at all. Right. Huh. I printed some stuff like Nate, stuff like that. The dogs from an iPhone five at five by seven, they were completely fine. So yeah. the ones now I would say at least an eight by 10, if not 11 by 14. Margie, that, that picture of the steps with the clouds, you printed that in an 8 by 10 didn't you? No, 11 by 14 11 by 14 and it looked good. Now, as far as how well this one would look because of the motion in it, I don't know. But, I, I mean, I'll send it to a printer and get it printed if you want me to. I'll tell you what it looks like. Mm. The other one's better. Yeah, the other one's better. This one, This one's not quite as good. This actually, I did this, and then I started, I shot a video after this. It was better. It, this idea was better for a video. So, uh, yeah, the other one was definitely better. Now we're going back a ways to an old iPhone. <laughs> he looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Run. Yep. I know that building. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Trixie ran in and out and got Brian there. Yep. But this is, uh, I'll look when we go back. I have it captioned, but I think it's either the iPhone XS or the iPhone 6. I think. I don't know. I've, I've posted pictures from an iPhone 6, an iPhone XS, an iPhone 11. And 14, or no, a 12 and a 14, sorry, not an 11. But, you know, I'm still... It's a good, one of them. sharp picture. It's a nice yeah. picture. I mm -hmm. pulled my phone out of my pocket, and I took this picture, and Beth didn't know I did it until she turned around and looked at me and seen me taking pictures of her. <laughs> and probably stuck my tongue out. You did, actually. 
<laughs> I have a picture of you with your tongue stuck out. Yes, yes, you did. But, but I really <laughs> like this picture a lot. You know, I like the composition of it. I, I just really like it. And it seems pretty sharp. Yeah. yeah. And look at the bark on the tree. I know. Mm. This one I took, uh, when I take this, last weekend. A couple of our, uh, the blue one's mine. This one's my buddy's. We were out doing some uh, RC riding, or RC crawling in Ohio Powell. And that's with the 14. Mm. Look how sharp the rock is. Mm. And the fern. The mm. tires tires on the truck. Yeah. And this did is, you use portrait mode on this? No, no, I did not. I just I was just gonna say that this is regular mode. This is not the portrait mode. Hmm. Nothing done to it. I didn't adjust the exposure or nothing like that. It's just a shot out of the camera. Oh, that's good. This one from yesterday. I shot this yesterday. Hmm. Jim was there. The Jim was there. Jim was there with me when I did this. Yeah. This is uh, I held the camera upside down as they mentioned in the one video, um, and it is on point five to get it wide enough to do the whole thing. And I didn't care if it distorted it or not. I didn't. You know, I just I wanted it to be a little bit strange. Um, but yeah, that's that was shot with the hmm. yesterday. What time were you there yesterday, Brian? Uh, from 10 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Huh. All okay. day. Yeah, I was there. I didn't, yeah. I guess we oh, didn't you were there? Past. You never yeah. seen me. Yeah, I know. I uh, I didn't see anyone. That's why I was, you know. You should have called me. I was there all day. Yeah. I was there. Brian Jimmy called me. I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. uh -huh. I like I the way the, cl the clouds are in that. Yeah, it was, a, yeah. it was a nice sunny day. That point five looks a little bit like an HDR. Or is that just me? Because it really looks good. That's cool. That's uh, Uniontown. A sunset over Uniontown mm -hmm. from up on a mountain. That's nice. Very nice. Mm hmm Telephone well, like I said, nothing, nothing done to him. Just straight out of the, out of the, uh, yeah, yeah. iCloud straight to, straight to here. So yeah, but I'm being you. I'm looking on the outside edge. Yeah, well, if it was me, if it was me, I'd crop the telephone pole and remove the yeah. uh, lines going through it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one was with a 12 Pro Max. That was the 14, 14. That was the XS Max. 14, 14. Okay. Let's see. Let's go here. Oop, wrong way. This is the XS. Cano. Yep. That's nice. Yeah, I was up there taking some pictures in a fall one. Uh, this was a while ago and I just decided to try a pano with the iPhone and it's not too bad. Mm. Panos are always weird, but you know, they always look a little bit strange, but, uh, not too bad. I didn't even realize there was a guy over here with a little kid in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> it was wet and slippery. I can tell you that up there. Yeah. That was the XS. Let's see. This is the iPhone XS. This is uh, before the uh, live photo slow motion type thing that we had with the uh, with the 14 that I showed you. So how'd you get that shot? If you didn't use live mode. Still nice. You can you could get it to slow the exposure down a little bit, but not uh -huh. as, not as slow as the the new stuff. Oh, okay. This this camera's. Uh, I'll, you know, this was like the 10, I think it is really what it is. It's the 10S. They came out with an X and then an XS, so it's a 10S. Hmm. 
This is the excess. Where's that at? That is the uh, Asylum. Oh, West Virginia. West Virginia, down in West Virginia, we went to. Yeah. Insane Asylum, wasn't Insane. it? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I was like, it looks familiar, but. Yep. I'd like to, I mean, I have, I'd like to get rid of this, but not get rid of the tree. So if I worked on that, I would remove this guy right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And probably That's remove weird. this white thing over here, but I don't really want to crop out. I need the building. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, with, with today's uh, Photoshop and stuff like that, we can get rid of that easy now. Yeah. Says. Oh, that looks familiar. Yeah, Mill Creek. That when you and I and who was it, uh, Melissa and DL. It, it or it may have been just me. I don't know. I've been out there several times, so it yeah. could have been me and Annie. It could have been me, you, Annie, Melissa, DL. It could have been. Uh, yeah. It's hard. To, it could have been me by myself. I'm not sure which trip it was, but I've been out there I a bunch. I know there's one that you posted on there that it was you and me. Yeah. I was going to post some from my iPhone when we went. Except for I took it at a different angle. So that was the 11 Pro. This is a 12 Pro. That's nice. Yeah. Where's that from Bachman Rock? Yeah, it's up above. Uh, yeah. Yep. I can actually see how it improved uh, with the. Uh, as uh, yeah, I, I was kind of the reason I did that. I wanted to post some pictures from different phones just to see how uh, we have yeah to see how the phone has changed or how the pictures have changed. Yeah. This is that one. Best. so. This was me and Annie was out there for this one. I know this. I know yeah, that. it was cold. That's the one I saw because I I showed Brian. I said you got to stop here. Yep. Because it just was so pretty with that the bridge reflected the water was just like it is just like a freaking mirror. Yeah, it was cold. It was cold. Yeah, it was cold. That was that was really cold that day. Yeah. I gave Brian a, a tour of the whole park that day. In the heated in the heated park. Yes. Yeah, in the heated car. <laughs> we rode around and looked at the, we rode around and looked at the park. We didn't get out very much. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Margie, Margie probably would have never got out of the car. No, I don't know. Yeah. I forget how it was like twenty degrees or something like that that day. It was cold. This, this is probably the same day. I think. Yeah. That was. We didn't stay out of the car out, out too long there either. No. Uh -huh. and that was the XS. So yeah, that was the same day. This is the iPhone six plus. Now I did use a um, a thing inside the phone to add the border to this. But it was so long ago, I probably couldn't. I couldn't tell you really if I did anything else. But this, so this is even before Margie's uh, iPhone Seven that we've seen. Mm. Pretty cool, though. Yeah, this is before I had like uh, spikes and stuff to walk on the ice and yeah. all that fancy stuff that I do now. Mm. And this is the 12 Pro. That's the bog. I like the sky. Mm. I do too. Yeah, I kind of like that one. All right, that was all of mine. And let's do a reload. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> I like it. 
This is from the parking lot where Nate and I do karate. <laughs> that is a jumbled mess. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness. Oh. <sighs> but I figured well, Margie would like it. I do. I do. <laughs> I like my wife. Take a look. Look at all the angles, you know, and triangles. Take a, and, take I mean, a look just, at the uh, subliminal face in that. Yeah. Thing. On the left. In, in the, yep. Yep. See yeah. The yeah. Eyes. Keep keep the wires from tangling up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> My dad dad would have climbed that pole and had a hissy fit. <laughs> what is, what is the name of that, uh, that uh, movie with that killer with the mask, the white mask on? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jason. Uh, Halloween, Jason. Jason. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good There's one. also a post with semi-serious ones, but then I thought of that one. I had to post that one separately. Yeah. Yep. My dad, my dad was a splicer for Bell Telephone. He would have. <laughs> 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 That's a mess. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, we could make this bigger, maybe. Yeah, one. There it is. There it is. I think these are all. All with the iPhone 14 Pro. So not the Max, but the Pro. Nice and sharp. Yep. And good colors. It looks like the colors are spot on. Mm -hmm. And that actually, um, believe it or not, it would be illegal to remove those things. Right. Oh, really? Right. Yep. Yeah. Ooh. And anywhere those grow is considered uh, uh, a marshland, and you're right. not allowed to you're not allowed to do anything to them. Anything to the cattails, huh. yeah. hmm. or the ground around it. You you cannot touch that. I have huh. no idea. I never knew that. Yep. Does those grow in the in the parking lot at Cracker Barrel? Is that uh, the yes. Pennsylvania rule? I, I know it's a Pennsylvania rule for sure, because when I worked on uh, whale sites and stuff like that, we would have to work around these things okay, and, and not bother them because it, it's considered, like I said, it's considered a marshland and you're not allowed to bother them. Well, I'm in for railroad. That is so sharp, so good. Where's this one at, Beth? That's at the Carnegie Science Center. Okay. I'm liking the I took Nate and two of his friends yeah. there last week. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely nice and sharp. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, a little I'm, crooked, but that little little Pepsi truck that's sitting in the front, my dad had a bank exactly like that. It was um it was a collectible. It was about eight inches long, eight inches long. Same, <laughs> same exact truck. Only there was a, a slot the top for it that it was a bank. It was metal. I like the way the light is. You know, you can catch the light. So everything is so sharp, and I like the lighting. Yeah, and the lights aren't all blown. They're not blown out either. They have that nice, nice color. Yeah. Yes. I like, really the, nice. I, I like the Permani Brothers. It's making me hungry. Mm -hmm. if you look right behind Permani Brothers is Isley's. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. See, see, Brian would hit for Manny Brothers first and then go across the street to Isley's <laughs> for the dessert. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Let's see what yeah, else. I really there. like that. So, yeah. That's really nice. Oh, those clouds are fine. Yeah. They must look like clouds this morning. So it's, it shot from inside my car in a parking lot. Uh -huh. I was not driving at the time. So there's weird reflections in there from my window. But, yeah, I was going to, I, I see those and then I figured out the glass. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty cool, those lines, all of the lines on the, uh, yeah. wow. They almost yeah. look like funnel, funnel clouds sideways. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. did too. Uh. Neat. But that's yeah. a lot of detail just from a cell phone. Yeah. 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 Very moody, the clouds are. 
Right. from your car too. No, that's from my front yard. I was going to say that's from the front of your house. <laughs> yeah. Well, I see the paint over there on the side, and that's when I was asking. There's a reflection of some sort had that pink in there. In fact, it's up on the top too. That might be from inside the living room and through the window. Uh huh. But it's sort of neat with that pink in there. Yeah. It's different. Well, sometimes, depending on the time of day, sometimes there is a little bit of a hint of pink that never really turns into the cool sunset that it should. Uh, okay. Is that is that everything? I think that was all of it. Yeah. So I didn't get anything uploaded. All like right. I wanted. You were off all day. What in the world have you been doing? Oh, I don't know. I was had a phone that kept saying <laughs> whenever I plugged it in that it um it was wet. All right. I do want to I do want to mention while we're on here. Uh, today's the last day to turn in calendar pictures. Uh, I've seen quite a few. Thank you for those of you that did turn them in. Um, so uh, if you got some calendar, something you want to add to the calendars, go ahead and get those added in. And uh, that way we can start the process of trying to figure out how to do a calendar with pictures. So uh, quite a few in there, guys. So I appreciate that. Everyone that uh, participated, thank you. Uh, I got some stuff I'll upload tonight. Um, I got to open Lightroom and get that going, but I'll get some stuff uploaded too. When Margie, you I did get the, Margie, I did get those on there today. I know. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> when when do uh when do we uh vote on all that? Or I will. i um. I'll set up a thing to vote here uh, in the next day or so, and we'll have a we'll have a little bit of time. I'm not going to ask you to do that just in a three day period, because there's quite a few pictures there to look at. You know, several of y'all been to uh, my Christmas party and went out in town and took pictures. So we need stuff for Christmas for you know, for January, February, you know, July Fourth. Just need different things for the months different photos for months well, we can put up more right for you to choose from um the idea was originally to do four from each person yeah just mm -hmm. just to see what we got that way we don't end up with i don't want to end up with a calendar with with 12 pictures from one person uh, in it you know we want to we want to spread the spread the love a little bit there yeah. uh but we'll we'll after tonight we'll take a look at it and see and then you know for some stuff that we're missing maybe I'll send out an email and say hey we're looking for some pictures from fall and winter or something like that just to add in so maybe we'll do that I'd like to see a nice yeah. a nice selection so that we can go through the whole year and and cover the different types and different uh different times of the year. Well, I, re I remember uh, a couple of Christmases ago we all were together. And they had ice carvers out there and lights decorating the statues around the center of town. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunity for a number of people to submit. Yeah. So we'll take a look after tonight. I, I mean, we don't, we're not on any kind of real, real tight schedule at this point. We still got a few more months before we have to, to uh, print, but after tonight, we'll take a look and see where we're at. And, and if we need to request a you know something specific like a christmas picture or something like that we'll do that we'll request and give you the option give you the opportunity to add that in as well okay. but um so if you haven't uploaded please upload in this evening uh so we can work on that and see what we need to do and see how that works out uh those of you those of you that did upload thank you all right anything from anybody else that they want to bring up or mention it's uh uh dennis yesterday was your first chance to to go to the uh steam show what do you think of it i thought it was great it was uh um, this, it was amazing a lot of things i have never seen uh, 
Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff there. I'm sorry mm -hmm. I, I missed it, but too many things going on that I had to request, and unfortunately, yesterday I had to go to the bottom of the list. Suzanne, that wasn't your uh, that wasn't your first trip there, was it? Um, no, I went with the group before, yeah. and uh, but saw a lot of things this time that I don't think I, you know, noticed before. So, and you know, I was taking a look at some of my photos today, and um, I'm really glad I went. One of the, one of the things about that show is that there's always something there that's different. There's a lot of stuff that's there that yeah. you don't see quite often, but you never know what's going to be brought in or what piece of equipment someone's found and decided to, to, to bring it over for, for people to see there. So it's a, it's kind of a, it's, it's really a cool show and it's a, it's a growing show. It gets mm -hmm. bigger and bigger every year. I was looking at my uh, um, drone video because after y'all left, I went back and shot drone or shot the video. And uh, I noticed quite a bit of area that I had not seen before that, that they've expanded on. So they're, they're still expanding that park. Um, there was quite a bit of area that, that was cleared off that I know was not cleared off last year. Um, so, uh, Brian, was that your drone that I saw up in the sky? Good possibility. Cause I, I know there was another guy there with a drone, but I never seen him fly, but I flew. Um, what time did you all left around four o'clock? No, it was earlier than that. What was that? Before three. Okay, so after yeah. three o'clock, I was flying. I flew until, uh, um, I flew for about an hour, probably. Okay. Did you fly by the derrick, by the oil derrick, by any chance? Yeah, I was down around there. And the coal, and the coal yeah. Uh, segment. Yeah, I flew mostly over the dirt areas. Right. Okay. So I didn't, that was I didn't you. fly up over top the the trees because there's really nothing to see up that way other than right. trees. Uh, but yeah, I flew mostly back and forth across the dirt areas, okay, um, in pretty much every direction across the dirt area back and forth. Yeah. Okay. So that was your drone. I saw. Yep. Is that an oh. annual event? What's that? Is that an annual event? Uh, it is a. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and no. They they actually do that twice a year. They do a show in May, but the May show is a lot smaller. Uh, it doesn't have everybody. Everybody doesn't come to that. The show in August is their big show, and that's the that's the one that we I usually go to because it has the most stuff at it. Yeah. The, one May, the one in May is co it coincides with the National Road um, wagon train and stuff like that. Uh, so it's but it's a lot smaller. It's not it, it doesn't have quite as much stuff on it. But the one in the one in August is always the big one. Yeah. The uh, coal section was very fascinating, how they dug out the coal and the uh, machinery they used and also the safety precautions. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was fascinating, I thought. And the ingenuity of uh, of it all and also the haymaking, how they put it into barrels, I mean, into bales and all that was quite fascinating. Yeah. So it very good show. Very good. Well, I'm glad you was there. I'm sorry we missed you. I wish we would have. I wish yeah, we I, were there. I was there from one to about 4.30. Okay. So I would probably cross paths and all. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, sure. yeah. Um, but it was good. I would rec recommend anyone to go next year and all that, because you see a lot of things that you normally would not see. Yep. Yeah. It's fun to watch all the machinery work. <clears throat> right. Right. Now uh, and see the different machineries that, the, you know, that they have. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I've, I've gone, I don't know how many, how many years um, to that show. And I always enjoy going there. Um, food's good that they have. And, you know, you know, they always bring some antique cars in, you know, do a show with that. So that's always nice, too. And then, uh, you know, but just watching the machinery and being able to get up close to it, you know, is always always a fun time. Mm. Always a good time. I'm going to, uh, over the next few days, I'll throw together a little video uh, with the drone shots and probably add some photos that I took there. Uh, I took a bunch of drone and I took a bunch of uh, regular video with my with my yeah. phone, uh, with my iPhone, because it does an excellent job of taking video as well. Uh, so I'll throw a video together. And once I do that, I'll post up a link to it so you can go check it out. Uh, right. See if you see me there, uh, Brian. 
<laughs> I'll see. Maybe I maybe you're in one. Maybe you're in a background or uh, in a drone shot somewhere. Uh, yeah, in the drone shot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was it was a good time. And speaking of things that you don't see, remember that the uh, Renaissance Festival was coming up. Um, if there's anybody on here, I think everyone that's on here has been there, except for maybe Rebecca. No, I know she's been there. She goes with Christine. Uh, Marty hasn't. Marty, Marty, have you not been there? I would. Uh, I would highly recommend coming. You'll, no, I you'll have go. not made it. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Bob, you've been there. Right? Yes, I've been there about uh, three years ago. Okay, well, and I, I know I know DL's been there once or five hundred times. Um, <laughs> he's kind of like me, where he, he's I'm, we almost run it. We we pretty much run into each other every weekend there. So uh, that is coming up. I believe it starts this weekend coming up. So uh, kind of weekend up. after twenty sixth. Twenty sixth. Okay, so next weekend. Um. <laughs> But keep an eye out. I'll we'll we'll put a post up as to when we're going as a group. But uh, I'll also post when I'm going if anybody wants to come along, whatever day. Uh, I'm going to go several Sundays this year. So uh, the Westmoreland Fair is this weekend. So yeah, it starts what the 18th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, um, Maybe I'm, we can do a. Maybe we can do a Westmoreland fair show, fair run, and take some mm -hmm. rides and stuff. Yeah. yeah. In the evening. Yeah. I'll I'll be able to go to the run festival. I think it's the second week of September that I have off. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. If I'm lucky. <laughs> um, I have it scheduled off as a as a vacation week, and I don't have anything in particular planned, but. I also took off the first week of October. I'm hoping and keeping my fingers crossed I can go to Texas. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. If there's nothing else, I think that uh, for a impromptu way of doing our meeting, I think that turned out pretty good. Yeah, I think so, too. Good. Um, thank you all for your participation. And put the links up there. And um, I will send out some emails. Post up your pictures for the uh, calendar if you want to. If you haven't done so already, please do so. And uh, we'll talk to y'all soon. Hey, hey y'all. Bye. 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 See y'all. Thank you. Y'all. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Good night. Good Bye. Night. Good night.